Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of our Tunnel of Man No Filters podcast. This episode we are joined by members of our Keeping On Lost Through Suicide support group alongside their founder Anne Boyle. Find out how the group came to be and hear members share the critical role the group has played in their journey of learning how to cope with their loss. Do you want to introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about yourselves? I'm Anne and I um, set up the Keep Non group a few years ago with the support from Sunderland Mind because when Philip and I lost our son Mark in 2010 there was no provision that we could find. There was a couple of groups that were national uh, like SOBS and there was, but there was nothing local and it took quite a few years to be honest to be in a position where I felt as though um, I wanted to reach out and see if there was any uh-huh. other people around who had similar experiences which I knew there were, I knew there were a lot um, but it's been a great help to me meeting everybody who comes to this group because it helps you understand that you're not alone mm-hmm. Brilliant Does anybody else want to introduce themselves? Shall I go next? So, so I'm Suzanne and um, I'm from London and I moved up here just over two years ago and I'd lost my son during the pandemic, Samuel was 17 and I wanted to see if there was any groups around again. Um, I knew there was a sobs group but um, yeah, so I, I found this one very randomly online. I can't even remember where where I found it and messaged down and I'd come mm. like from Gosforth to this group. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my background. Lovely, thank you. I'm Philip, um, Anne's husband, um, and I'm an occasional visitor to the group. I, I don't attend regularly. Um, every time I do attend, I, I walk away with a lot of um, strength, I guess, uh-huh. but it also takes a lot out of me, mm-hmm. I have to admit. Um, hearing other, ex- other people's experiences um, humbles you sometimes, mm-hmm. puts things into perspective for you. Um, and I mean, I just feel that this group is very, very needed and sadly, Mm-hmm. people will, will be able to come and, and access some solidarity with others who, who are on a, a similar journey. Thank you. I'm Jess. Um, I started to um, I started attending the group after I lost my son Keaton, um, which has come up for five years now. He was 19 year old. Um, Again, I found that there was very little support um, groups out there and I think I was past the details of the group to, to us by a friend. Um, and I think I started attending the group when it was first yeah. getting set up, wasn't it? Yeah, very early. Yeah, yeah. when it was the early days, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what made you want to access a group? What, what made you reach the point where you were ready to find something? I access support within weeks of mm-hmm. losing my son. It was pandemic time, so it was all online. But it was like, I need to find someone that's been on this journey. Mm-hmm. How do you survive it? How Because it's so extreme and the people around you are supportive, but they're not going through the same thing. Yeah. And it's like, how the hell do you survive this? I need mm-hmm. to find my community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it was very similar for me, to be honest. Um, we, Mark died in 2010, uh, like I said, and there was very, very little understanding about suicide then. I think the conversation has completely changed now and the, you know, the landscape of understanding of mental health now is so much different mm-hmm. to all those years ago. Um, and thank goodness that it is. But the numbers of people were losing to suicide do not seem to be going down, seem to be going up. Mm-hmm. So... Um, it makes you it makes you wonder really about how the conversation are working and, and do people understand it enough so that they can have the right conversations and ask mm-hmm. people the right questions who are in a very 
dark place. Um, but we were bo- uh, Philip and I were both in a, a dark place of our own soon mm-hmm. after we lost Mark. Um, and it would have been great, I think, to talk to people who had the same kind of experience just to see you can live your life and you can carry on and you can not you know, get to a point where you don't feel guilty for laughing about something because obviously the guilt kills us all, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and the what ifs and all of that. So I was looking at that time for a group and, and I think for less, less than I was, I was really keen to find other mums, really. It was mums I wanted to talk to. Like, how, how do you get through this? Exactly as Suzanne said. Um, and we just couldn't find anywhere. We found, found a small group in Newcastle, but there was only one person turned up and her experience was just too recent. It was a big trigger for her. It was mm-hmm. a very, very difficult meeting and I, I couldn't do that again. Um, so personally, I had to be quite a distance away from those and Mark to be able to, to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But that that's true that everybody's on different journeys, aren't they? So what is what is the right time for somebody to, to reach out might not be the same for somebody else. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the group. What have you sort of benefited from coming along? For me, it's, um, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's being able to share your, your thoughts and your feelings and to think, you know, other people is going through the same as you. And mm-hmm. it, again, it's like when you said about the guilt, mm-hmm. um, you know, like the guilt will just it'll still stay with you forever. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think it is just speaking to some to people who's been through the same thing to to know that you're not. Mm-hmm. What you're was not that crazy like? for thinking uh-huh. thoughts that you do think. What was that like when you first sort of came in the group and you 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 found those people? It's hard. It, it is hard listening to other people's stories, um, but I think it is nice to that you to know that you're not you're not alone and that uh-huh. there is people there that you can speak to. Like I, I actually had counselling. I had twelve sessions of counselling, mm-hmm. and like the lady was lovely, but she she didn't have she didn't have children. She'd never lost anyone to suicide. So I just thought, how how can she direct us, or how can she give us advice, or what how, what did, how to deal yeah. with things, how to deal with me feelings, me thoughts when she hasn't got children and she hasn't lost anyone to suicide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then coming to a group where you get to relate to people who've been on, even if the circumstances aren't the same, the journey and, and the feelings mm-hmm. are similar, so you can relate in that way. Yeah. Uh, it must be a big, it must play a big role in sort of the healing process as well of, of the issues. Mm-hmm. I think there's something about the continuity. If you, some groups you can go to and you never see the same person again. Yeah. Whereas this group, you do see people on their journeys and, yeah. and it becomes like a bit of a social group as well. You see mm-hmm, people, yeah. you know, getting married and, you know, becoming grandparents, all those yeah. kind of life things that are really difficult to navigate when you've lost somebody. And and it's like, I always think like I take a little bit from everybody in their experience to uh-huh. kind of make your own toolkit because, um, yeah, there's there's just nothing like it. And I also think you walk into a room... And and actually, the, there's no kind of having to apologise for how you feel or if there's any emotion because it just so it just cuts through everything. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of takes you all to the same level. Mm-hmm. You come from different backgrounds, and, and the fact that I come from the south as well, I thought, oh god, that might be a barrier. But actually, that's that's nothing mm-hmm. when you've been through the worst experience um. of your life. There's, yeah. But it means that you all get to, like like you say, it's like community, isn't it? You've been able to build a community around you and you get to go on that journey together and, and play a part in each other's journey as well, which must be really rewarding for you guys as well to see because you get to celebrate each other's wins and, and be there when when maybe there's, there's losses or just be there when things aren't, aren't the best. You've still got the community around you. There's, there's some key times when um, when people do need to talk about things like inquests and things. I mean, your experience with the inquest yeah. was very, uh, just heartbreaking, yeah. wasn't it? And and we understand that because we've all been through that, the inquest situation and um, birthdays, anniversaries, all those things. And we understand without even having to say mm-hmm. that you've got that kind of anxiety leading up to it. So we all deal with it in a different way when it comes to the anniversaries and things. You've just been to Mexico, haven't you? And, 
um, had, a, had sort of a, a different, a very different yeah. experience to get yourself away after all, all the things that you'd been involved in with that quilt. Um, and I, I just think that we don't have to explain ourselves. We don't have to give the backstory over mm. and over and over again. Some people might want to, you might want to repeat things. Um, but I, I just think it's sort of a trust among us, like you mentioned, a community and understand each other. I think it's sort of, it's a trusted group. You don't have to be anybody particular there. Everybody's mm. the same, as you say. You just get to be you and just come mm-hmm. and get to be a place where there's like no judgment, no anything. It's just everybody's on that same sort of mm-hmm. level playing field. I think the phrase Jess used, you're not alone, uh-huh. uh, really struck with me there. I mean, when Mark passed and um, my sister was in the band Olive and uh, they had a big hit with the song You're Not Alone. And we played that at his funeral. Uh-huh. It's ruined it for And I forever. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it means different things mm-hmm. now it to me yeah. than it did at the time. And and this group does really bring that home, that because you do feel alone when when it happens. You just think, why, why us, why this family. And then, you know, you come and you, you hear other people's experiences and you realise, oh, God, that must have been horrendous for them. And mm. you, you do share their grief. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard, but you can also look across the table and you can see, you know, you're not on your own. Mm-hmm. And, and you've got people who've got extremely similar... I mean, none of them will ever be the same. No. The situations of how they've happened. But it's a similar heartbreak, without a doubt. Um, and, and that's the, the best thing from, for me, from this group, that you do recognise definitely the, there's a kindred spirit mm. in, in all, amongst all the people away. way. Mm. Well, the key thing is, is that, it, like you said, it, it's that you aren't alone and, and the fact that you're all at different points on your journey as well must be really rewarding for each other and also for new members coming in because they get you can relate to where they're at, but then also they can see what, what the future can look like as well. I know you've touched a little bit there about how it makes you feel like you're not alone, but what does the group mean to you? I think there's something about that level of understanding because when you lead someone to suicide... In my experience is it goes on and on and on. You have I had lots of investigations, a really complex inquest. I've still got lots of legal stuff and people don't mm. realise I'm three and a half years down the line and it is still happening. Mm. And, and someone came to the group and they'd had a lot of complexity with their loved ones and I was able to say, well, actually, there's an organisation called Inquest, which is a charity that supports people with complex loss and then they got their support through them. And, you know, we're talking, like, legal support. And and I just think you lose someone to suicide and nobody gives you a book that says, right, in this circumstance, go to this charity mm-hmm. or these people will really help you. You learn really randomly about other things that can kind of support you. And I, And for me, that was really helpful to be able to say to someone, you know, actually, there is this whole wealth of support out there. Mm-hmm. Um and you end up becoming a bit of a kind of a mini resource for that, which which sounds really quite random. And that's the word. Random is the word. I always get so frustrated around, around suicide loss. I found this group randomly. You know, I found out things just through Facebook or a Google search, and it just shouldn't be like that. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so that becomes a, a frustration because you see people maybe don't find this group until, mm-hmm. like, years down the line, and you mm-hmm. think, oh this would have been really helpful for you. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is there anything that you wish you'd been made aware of earlier or anything that you'd had earlier that would have helped with, deal with the process better? I think for me, because I had a really complex situation and, and I moved across the country uh-huh. and it was the pandemic, it was like the perfect storm of like those inconsistencies. But I think it's 
it's when you lose somebody having one safe person that gives you the right information that signposts you and you are supposed to have that I had a family liaison officer but um it doesn't really happen so you at the time where you're the least resourceful you have to go out and find this support mm-hmm. for yourself and I'm I'm really quite good at kind of burrowing down and finding stuff but it is is it an exhausting process to see mm-hmm. what is mm-hmm. out there it, it's sort of brilliant in a way then that you were able to find this group when you did so that you've been able to despite all those struggles being able to benefit from from coming from from finding out more about the group um does anyone else want to sort of share what the role that the group has played in their journey I think Suzanne touched on a good point there that um, that when you found information about various things and you shared that with one person in particular and it really helped them around an inquest issue. Um, but also bringing people together who've got lots of knowledge. I mean, I'm no expert. All, all my credentials are for this group is just that I lost a son to suicide, mm-hmm. that's all. And I've gone down the journey and I'm further down it than other people. But... Um, People have come to the group who've brought so much to it and who bring their own knowledge. I mean, Jess, you brought knowledge about what you yeah. knew about Inquest and shared that with people, yeah. didn't you? And Suzanne, you got us involved in the quilt, which was a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think everybody around the table was involved yeah. in that. So that was absolutely fantastic. And they're things, you know, I've, in my professional life, I always relied on the, other people's expertise, to be mm-hmm. honest. And that's how I say the group work and that people join and they have things to give that they might not think oh. about at the time. But sharing their own knowledge or their own research or even just their own experience helps other people. Mm-hmm. And it's that shared information in a very safe and trusted environment that, to me, it's like the biggest strength of the group. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's the fact, well, it's like what you've said, the fact that you're all on this one level and that you're all just peers trying to support each other through, through everything that you're going through. What would be... What would you um, say to anybody who was wanting to come? What would be your words to them? I would say come. <laughs> I'd say come along, we'll make you a cup of tea and see if yeah. it's for you. If it's not, that's fine as well. But uh, try it. You'll at least get a cup of tea. That's that's the starter. And, you know, when you're in a place where suicide has affected you, I think you just you need something mm-hmm. as a starter. And even if this group wouldn't be useful for you, you've got to come and check it out first mm-hmm. to see whether you feel you could get something from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say come for half an hour, even if you'd like you said to yourself, I'm setting a timer, I'm giving you half an hour. Because mm-hmm. walking through the doors... It's, it's quite toughest, daunting, yeah, isn't it? Because you think, oh, you know, I've got this weird thing in common with these people. I, I wouldn't be thrown together with them in any other walk of life. Mm. And that kind of is odd. But then actually when you sit down with them and see people, and you just think, oh, actually, they're just regular people like us that have this awful thing in common. Mm-hmm. And once you've come once, like, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, you've broke that barrier and you mm. know what to expect from them and then whether it's uh, you stay for half an hour and you set yourself that limit or you come and get from the experience of others, then it's sort of up to you how you use the grief after mm. that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been one of the most frustrating things about it all, to be honest with you, Vic, because getting the word out, as you know, I've talked mm-hmm. to you about the, the PR and everything over the years, uh, and getting the word out at a time when we know there are people who are taking it's their really own lives. Hard. It's really frustrating. I mean, taking leaflets around the funeral directors and things like that and asking them if they'll advocate on our behalf and mm-hmm. have that conversation <coughs> with somebody. Whether or not they do, I don't know. I don't know that we've ever got anybody who's come through that kind of route. Um, but we have had some people who've come very soon after they've lost somebody and that's not always the, the right time. Maybe they need a little bit of a, a time, mm-hmm. you know, because sort of, you're in shock, you're in shock for years, aren't you, really, when mm-hmm. you lose somebody to suicide. Um, so getting the, the word out is one of the most important things to me because I just know there are loads of people out there who could benefit from it. 
But it, it's just, it's, well, what you've all said, it's knowing what's available to you, isn't it? And, and being at a point where you're comfortable, uh, like you're ready for that step and to, to reach out and, and get the support and just knowing that the support is there. I think, well, it, it, as well, it's not just people who's lost children, it's people who's lost siblings, yeah. isn't it? And mm. that's come along to the group. It's mm. not just for... Yeah. It's not just people who's lost children. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, anyone, if you've lost anyone to suicide. Mm -hmm. The great yeah, place well, Yeah, because it's yeah. affected you in any way, really. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. some people haven't got a family link with somebody, but they were very, very close and, and they've lost somebody. So, yeah, there's no boundaries, really. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Mm -hmm. No. You're all good. Perfect, thank you. Huge thank you to Anne, Suzanne, Philip and Jess for taking part in this episode of the podcast and to you for listening. To find out more about our Keeping On group and the different services we offer, you can visit our website at www.sunderlandmind.co.uk. Alternatively, you can find us at Mind Sunderland on Facebook or at Sunderland Mind on Instagram, X, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. Don't forget to rate and share this episode of the podcast. We'll see you next time.